G'day guys and welcome back to Layla Central and of course my 300 subscriber special video on how I weather my Hornby Black 5 and as you can see she's uh, very rusted, very uh, ready for the scrap heat pretty much but uh, anyway let's get started. So the first thing uh, we are looking at here is obviously the uh, the factory finish. Now we've got these glass windows here. Um, these are something that I want to try and preserve if I can. Um, so I'm going to use a bit of a masking uh, product. Now what I'm using is Vallejo Liquid Mask. And this is uh, essentially a liquid rubber. Um, very good for small models if you wish to protect things. So as you can see here, I've just painted it on um, using a brush. Um, it is an acrylic as well, so you can wash your brush in water. And once it dries, as you can see there, it dries completely clear. Um, so now the first thing I'm going to do is a bit of rust uh, basis. So as you can see, I'm using a rough sponge. I'm going to use my tweezers again. And uh, the paint that I'm going to be using here is some old rust uh, by MIG. Now this is a, a foundation or an acrylic that I'm using. Um, now I'm also going to be using some other rust colors such as medium uh, rust. And I believe the other one that I'm going to be using here is dark rust as well. Um, now, I'm not a, uh, a worker for MIG, but uh, <laughs> I do love their products. So, now what I'm doing here is I've essentially uh, dipped the sponge into the acrylic paint itself. Now, I'm not using much. I'm you know, dabbing it into the paint and then dabbing it onto a flat surface until I get uh, the consistency that I'm after. And then I'm dabbing it onto the actual model itself. Now, this, uh, I'm starting off with the darker colors and then I'll build them up to the lighter colors um, as well. Now, unfortunately, due to the lighting, I thought when I was filming this, you'd be able to see the color go straight on. Um, it is subtle um, because this is the darker brown to begin with. Um, but as you can see here, I'll put it in a random fashion, uh, try to create no visual pattern and uh, just dab away until I see something that looks, uh, something that I'm essentially happy with. Okay, now once you've uh, applied that layer, as you can see here, that's my uh, darkest foundation. And uh, as we switch over to the tender itself, so it's given it almost like a bit of a dusty sort of look as well. Um, so yeah, big fan of the actual uh, color that this uh, is. You could even use it just to weather dust. So the next thing I'm doing, I'm now applying uh, the next shade uh, that's a bit more lighter on top, using the same technique. So, you know, I've got my uh, sponge there, I've dipped it uh, into some paint, I've rubbed it off and uh, put it onto the dry surface below, and then I'm uh, essentially touching it on to uh, the model itself. So again, there's no right or wrong way. Um, you just need to, you know, when you have a look at the surface, having a look at what you're after and how the model actually looks, um, you know, you will dictate to yourself whether um, you know it looks proper and you're happy with what you're actually doing here. Okay, now once that uh, second layer is done, I'll then move to my lightest uh, color that I'm actually applying to the tender itself. Now I'm still using the sponge technique uh, to apply it. However, I got tired of uh, using the tweezers uh, for this. So I've uh, just, as you can see there, scrunched it up a little bit. Um, and uh, when you actually apply your subsequent layers, um, I try not to do as much. So as you remember, when I start with the darker rust color to begin with, I'll put a little bit of it on. Uh, right across the whole model. The second layer, put it over the top in select areas, but again, reduce the quantity that I'll put down. And uh, this final layer, I'll put even less down. Um, again, now some of these uh, parts, like you can see where I'm dabbing on there, um, some parts are a bit strong, as you can see, particularly down around the uh, the axles and the wheels of the tender itself. Now, these will be blended in uh, later on using, uh, you know, some other products, etc. Um, now, 
so as you can see there it is quite stark it really you know bang it's really in your face um, but uh, as you will watch this video continuing on I will knock it back into the actual model itself um, reducing that intensity uh, because this light color uh, really is quite strong um, you know you could even dilute it down with a little bit of uh, dark paint and create a, a bit of a, a darker shade so it's not as strong um, but uh, for what I was doing here I was pretty happy with it I had no issues and as I mentioned uh, we'll knock it back so it's not as intense Okay, now once that uh, third and final layer is down, there's the, uh, the main locomotive itself, as you can see here. Um, so some parts, uh, you know, those lighter colours are more intense in some areas than others. And um, now, as you can see, I've just chucked it around the boiler uh, area as well. Um, basically, not create any um, actual pattern with it all. Now the next thing I'm going to be using here is this product called uh, Transpirator uh, by MIG and it essentially turns your paints transparent. Um, so now all I'm using here is the same colours I used previously. So here I'm starting with my darker uh, rust itself colour, just a couple of drips in a little container. Um, the next thing I'll be adding is uh, some drops of that Transpirator as well as some acrylic thinner. Now this Transpirator uh, stuff, it you know, it can turn it into a bit of like a tint. Um, or a filter um, or as the name suggests it makes it partially transparent now the more transpirator you add to your paint obviously the more transparent it becomes as well so there again there is no right or wrong way on how much you dilute this um, you know here as you can see I'm wipe, mixing it up then wiping uh, the paint on that uh, clear container above just to engage just how transparent that uh, paint actually is becoming and um, you know it's um, you, you mix it to your taste um, and what you actually want um, so very useful product um, as you can see it's extremely runny um, as well very thin and as you as you can see here I just keep adding a few more drops here and there mix it up take a look how its uh, properties are how transparent it is until I was actually happy with uh, what I actually got Okay, now once you've uh, uh, prepared it to the consistency and the transparency that you're after, what I've done now is I've transferred uh, that product that I've mixed up into my airbrush. Now the airbrush itself, I've only got it uh, on 15 psi, so very light. Um, now all I'm doing is I'm applying this transpirator over some of those rust areas themselves. So as I mentioned, this is going to be partially transparent. So those bright uh, spots of rust that we put on just before that. Uh, you know need to be knocked back this is where part of blending it in will actually occur or blurring it is what some people will call it um, so you know I'm applying uh, this bit of rust right across the chassis uh, down below where the wheels are as well um, and then applying this over the model again in a random fashion uh, to what I actually felt was uh, acceptable um, or what I actually liked um, now I'm comparing photos while I'm actually doing this as well um, so very low pressure on your airbrush um, I'm just applying it in a couple of key spots over some areas give it uh, you know still got some of that black showing through but the transpirator uh, still gives it a bit of a you know a tint or a, um, a filter over that black um, it is a subtle sort of look um, you know it looks like rust is actually starting to come but you know you can still see the original uh, black uh, paintwork that was on this uh, locomotive Okay, now we come to obviously the locomotive itself. Now, as you know, with uh, like steam locomotives and of course diesels, there are some moving parts uh, such as the contacts, um, the wheels themselves that make contact with the rails. And you know, all these critical items transfer power to the motor. Now, if there's any interruption to it, um, you know, it's not going to run properly. Now, this transpirator that I've applied uh, with the actual uh, dark brown paint. Now, when it comes to the actual wheels, um, you will see me give it a bit of a, 
essentially a gloss over with the airbrush so that way I've removed the satin black finish to the wheels um, but I haven't gone crazy with it you certainly don't want to flood these wheels um, or any of the moving parts either um, you know it's just to give it a bit of uh, weather a bit of worn appearance um, and then it has actually been used um, so same technique as before otherwise uh, when it comes to the main uh, bodywork of the locomotive as to what I did with the tender you know I'm just uh, applying that uh, filter over the areas where I feel it's uh, appropriate and where I want to knock back some of that intense color down as well Okay, and just like before, you know, I'll start working up to the lighter colors. So now I'm using my medium rust or a lighter brown. Um, and the same process again, I've diluted it down with the transpirator to a consistency that I'm happy with. And then I'll airbrush this over uh, on top of those areas again, uh, being very careful uh, when using the airbrush. You know, I don't want it to splatter onto the model itself. You want to keep that mist um, from the airbrush as fine as possible. So I've used, uh, a low pressure as mentioned before on my airbrush it's only set to 17 uh, 15 psi um, and the reason for that is you know the pressure isn't blasting out of that airbrush so hard that if uh, any particles or any droplets are a bit more bigger that have gotten through or it's built up around the nozzle um, you know it's not going to transfer onto the model itself so having that lower pressure you know and having your paint thin ensures that it goes on thin it goes on uh, smoothly but you know your margin of error uh, occurring is also less um, so as you can see here you know I'm just applying it in some areas around the actual tender itself and I'll do the same again for the engine as well So here we are back at the uh, locomotive itself. So um, now, as I mentioned before with the tender as well, you know, I'm just applying uh, this in select areas very lightly, very thinly. Um, obviously, you know, if you're doing the wheels like I will be in a couple of parts as well, um, you know, you just make sure you don't cake it on. Um, you don't want those moving parts to be solidified or damaged. Um, you know, just be careful, take your time with it, uh, is my only advice that I can give you. And, um, and as you can see there, I've just, you know, hit it in a couple of areas and you've got that good transition. You know, you've used some dark, um, rust colors previously, you know, and they're merging into the lighter rust, as you can see here, particularly like around the cap. Um, you know, so just take your time, use the airbrush and get an effect that you're happy with. So here we are, same step again, but now using my final lightest rust color. So, you know, be gentle with it. Um, it is a very strong color. Um, it is a very light brown, even though it does look uh, kind of orange in some parts. But um, yeah, don't go crazy with it. But obviously, you know, it's your locomotive, your model. You do what you see fit, of course. Now just to show you guys essentially afterwards um, just how much is actually left you know I don't mix a lot up but um, once you've actually finished you've got a lot of that transpirator left um, in your actual airbrush now here I'm uh, starting to get a couple of pigments uh, ready here so I'm using two different uh, colors here I'm using a dark earth pigment but I'm also using a light earth pigment now these are from a set that I've got ages ago called uh, uh, by memory, I think they were uh, Flames of War uh, kits. Um, so I've used some of that. Um, I've also got a jar of uh, AK Interactive uh, pigment here that I'm dispersing out now. 
I transfer it onto a pellet, so I've got a bit of control over it. And uh, once I'm uh, happy with the proportions I've got there, I'll get my model ready to apply it. Now, I'm just using a very soft uh, brush here. Um, now, all I'm doing is in select areas, particularly the rivets, um, any detail where I want some build up, I'm using a combination of the dusts themselves. Now, the good quality pigments uh, are a very fine ground powder. Um, you know, if you use a little bit of it on your actual brush, it does go a very, uh, goes a long way. Um, and you, know, you get that good blend of dustiness um, and dirt or grime build up on your actual model. So you can see here, I'm just touching uh, the surface of the uh, the pigments that I've got in my uh, palette very lightly, and then I'm you know dashing it uh, and rubbing it across the actual model. Um, and you know, using two different colors creates a little bit of variation as well in the uh, models. Now, some people will, uh, you know, apply their pigments and here I'll show you, look, there's very, very little on my actual brush itself. Um, now, some people will use makeup brushes to apply their pigments, um, you know, you, you do what you see fit. These are just some synthetic uh, bristle brushes. So, you know, they're not uh, horsehair. They're, um, you know, makeup brushes. I'm just using synthetic brushes here, which does the job perfectly fine, uh, you know, without that big price tag, of course, as well. So, you know, I'll apply this around the model uh, to detail and to areas that I see fit. Now here when it comes to the engine itself, you can see I've twisted my brush around uh, going vertically. Now I've got the same uh, assortment of pigments that I'm using here. Now what I'm doing is I'm focusing in on rivets um, as well as any beams or parts that stick out where I know dust would accumulate and possibly run down with time. Now obviously this is a dry product so it's going to look dusty. It's not going to look like a run mark. Um, however it's going to assist with um, you know illustrating some of that stuff. So when it comes to uh, any of the, the corners as you can see here I'm just depositing it so it looks like there's dirt dust build up in there. But when it comes uh, to areas that can actually run I'm going with it as you can see here as well um, just keeping that shape keeping that um, you know, trying to make it look natural uh, rather than uh, you know going across you know and if I used a, an even thicker brush uh, going uh, horizontally instead you know the effect is not going to be the same as well so I'm just trying to be a bit precise um, and apply it in areas where grime would potentially run off um, and I do po uh, focus a fair bit of effort around the actual smoke box door itself um, and as you can see here again you know I'm highlighting the rivets I'm going around them in the direction that they're going um, as well. Here's where you can see, uh, you know, where I'm focusing around the rivets on the tender itself. You know, I'm using a bit of a, this is actually dark earth, believe it or not, not light earth. Now, you know, it's going to create a bit of a checkered sort of pattern, something that, you know, I'm not a fan of. Um, some people may be, um, but I'm not, because to me, it doesn't look right. Um, however, you will see uh, future on, uh, later on as this video progresses, how I actually remove a lot of those lines, um, tidy it up a bit as well. Now, um, as you can see here, I'm dusting around those uh, the chassis where the wheels line up as well, focusing where dust buildup would occur. Um, and again, you know, if you're move, doing it around moving parts and your wheels where there's co the contacts and your you know your wheels make contact with uh, the rails, you know, don't go crazy with this stuff. Is my advice: just keep it neat, um, give it a light dusting, uh, but don't go crazy with it. Um, either. Now as you can see I still have the uh, plastic coal load in this so I do plan to put some uh, other coal in there. Uh, at the moment I haven't got the, the products to actually do that so I will do that eventually just uh, not in this video at the moment. Uh, 
Okay, now here comes uh, some of the fun stuff. Now this is uh, a dark brown wash for green vehicles. Now this isn't an enamel wash. Um, now the purpose on why I'm actually using this now, oh, before I get to the, notice how this brush is got some very long bristles. It has a very nice uh, tip on the end of it as well. And uh, I'll explain that a little bit later. So this uh, enamel wash is going to be used for, you know, putting a bit of, uh, lining around areas particularly if we look at uh, you know axle boxes where there's grease and grime builder um, you know fluids and things that would actually leak um, i'm going to apply it around the actual model itself now um, it won't be confined to just the wheel areas but i'm also talking the rivet areas as well Now this brush that I'm actually using, um, as you can see, it's got some very, very long bristles on it. Um, and it is a synthetic brush as well. Now, the beauty of it is I'm just touching it into my pot of uh, enamel wash and I'm then running it along these areas itself. Now, the brush is uh, not overloaded. Um, I've got full control over it, but the beauty of these long bristles is, is when I actually apply uh, the wash to these areas, you know, it keeps flowing. I'm not going back to the pot as often um, but you know I've got great control so as you can see here now if the rivets are super close I'll just you know put it as a thin line right across um, if the actual rivets uh, do have a bit of space in between each one where I might be able to um, you know distinguish each one as you can see here all I'm doing with the brush is just touching that little area around the rivet and uh, due to the capillary action of the uh, the wash and the surface you know it runs around it quite well um, now this uh, will actually dry um, to a matte finish as well um, and as you can see here with the brush I'm just uh, you know using it very controlled doing a couple of runs in areas um, now as you can see when it's wet um, it is quite strong but when it dries um, it'll be a lot more faded um, so you'll be able to see it it'll be subtle uh, but it's not going to stick out right in your face Okay, now to the uh, wheels and moving parts around the locomotive. You know, these have got a lot of uh, parts that need to be lubricated. Um, you know, there's a lot of very important stuff. Um, so just be mindful of where your parts or the rods actually rotate and move. Now, you'll see I'm applying uh, the same enamel wash close to these moving parts, but not right on it. Um, now, you need to be careful as well around any moving part that if this does actually seep in there, um, when this product dries, you know, it may cause a little bit of seizure. Um, it can be fixed, of course, but it's not a quick fix, obviously. So, you know, the more controlled and the more patient you are, um, you know, the more you're going to save yourself a lot of problem uh, into the actual future itself. Um, and having a, a brush like this helps reach uh, all those tight nook areas, uh, nooks and crannies. Um, you know, it enables me to um, get around to essentially all the parts without flooding the area. And that's probably the key point. You just don't want to flood all these moving parts. Um, so like I mentioned, take, take your time, take care, and uh, you'll be rewarded with some weathered wheels as well. Okay, so here I'll uh, just get, zoom the camera in for you guys so you can see now once that wash has actually dried around those rivets, you know, it's knocked a lot of that uh, dust uh, back from the pigments. Now, what I'm actually doing here now is I'm using that same brush. Now, I've dipped it into some uh, enamel uh, thinners. Um, you can use some white spirit, of course. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm cleaning up around some of these areas. So where the wash has dried uh, a bit too much, um, as you can see right around the rivets, you know by using that brush I'm cleaning around those rivets themselves so trying to confine uh, that enamel wash that I put down just to go around the rivets instead of having this dark line that goes right across or right down those areas 
when it comes to any of the striking that I've put in there, um, again, uh, you know, touch hitting the sides with the actual brush itself, you know, it creates a much more finer and softer run of uh, rust or weather. That's actually run down the loco from some rain. same uh, for the roof areas here um, as you can see the, you know, there's a big stark uh, contrast between you know where the pigments were plus the enamel wash um, so I've applied uh, a fair bit of uh, enamel thinner in these areas here just to you know give it a bit of a, a knockback uh, try and blend these areas in a little bit um, so you know they work together rather than against each other if you want to call it that so as you can see here, I'm just you know giving it a quick rub in between the uh, rivets themselves um, you know, this will assist in, you know, putting some of the pigment in place as well. Um, not permanently, you'd be able to adjust it further as well. Um, but, you know, the idea is, is you're trying to blend the two effects together um, and using your white thinner um, or white spirit um, will actually achieve this as well. So again, you know, I'm just taking my time, giving the areas a bit of a tickle, uh, tickle up and, um, you know, in some areas if I want the run to be a bit more uh, accented, um, as you'll see in some parts, I'll drag the brush downwards to simulate that running. Okay, here comes the uh, next bit. Now I'm just using some black pigment here, um, in this case, uh, black smoke. Um, now I'm just transferring some of that pigment to uh, the pellet, uh, so I've got a bit of control on what I actually want to do with it. Now I'm going to be using an oil paint with this. Now uh, this is a dark brown uh, product by my uh, MIG. Now oil paints themselves, you know, you can buy oil paint, dilute them down with some thinner. Um, the problem with oils is they do take a long time to actually dry. Now the benefit of uh, using this product here um, is, you know, you can get some wonderful blending and effects with oils um, now this product made by MIG I've noticed does dry incredibly quicker compared to uh, standard oils out there if you just mixed it up and diluted it yourself this comes already ready-made you now I'm just applying it to the local in this area as you can see and um, it dries quicker, um, so the convenience plus drying quicker to me, it, it ticks the boxes, um, but I still have the benefits and the features of that. Now, what I'm doing here is I've applied that dark brown uh, to some areas on top. Now, using that uh, black or smoke pigment, I'm now dabbing it into those areas and uh, kind of like mixing it up on the actual surface. Um, now, the idea here is it's going to create a bit of a, a darkish, uh, oily sort of patch uh, from you know any of the equipment in the areas um, once that's actually been put down and dried um, it's I'm going to blend it out or fade it out using some actual thinner as well um, which you'll see shortly So here you can see um, how I'm trying to actually blend that or fade it out. I'm dipping uh, my brush into some uh, enamel thinners or white thinner uh, or white spirit, whatever you wish to uh, call it. And what I'm doing here is I've got some of it on my brush, I'm putting it into the edges and then I'm trying to drag it out, blend it out. And as you can see, I'm then wiping my brush onto uh, the surface below. So I'm taking away some of that pigment as well as that uh, oil paint itself. Um, creating that faded uh, oiled sort of uh, look and uh, and again look there's no real 
right or wrong way about this. This is just how I'm doing it. Um, and you might want to do it for some of your other models, including vehicles, um, and get some good results. Um, but, you know, play with it, have a fiddle with it, um, and you'll see, you know, just how good oils can actually be uh, in these areas. Okay, now we're up to the next bit. Now I'm here, I'm using some wet effects by MIG. Now, what I'm doing here is, as you can imagine, applying this to surfaces or areas where you know, water or moisture is going to be building up. So I'm starting here on the tender uh, where the water would actually occur. And, um, you know, these sorts of things here, you know, the, the difference between this uh, wet effects versus say gloss varnish is gloss varnish is quite thick um, you can dilute it down but you know it's going to you know adjust the surface where there's going to be a bit of a hump now this uh, water effects it's super thin um, it's like the consistency of water except it's a it is a gloss um, so you know it does give the simulation of water or um, you know moisture that's leaking in some areas so you know you don't have to dilute this down I'm just using it straight from the pot using my brush um, and I'm just applying it in a bit of a stippled sort of manner just to try and give the impression that you know some water or something that's been leaking and it's running in this particular direction um, so I'll apply it around the tender I'll also apply it around the locomotive in some parts where it's pooling as well um, and yeah, like I mentioned, it's like a gloss, um, except it is much, much thinner. Um, and, you know, it does, in my opinion, look better than uh, an actual gloss varnish because this actually does look like it's wet in some parts. Um, so, no, big fan of this product. Um, if you haven't tried any of this wet effect stuff, you know, give it a crack uh, on some of your models. You'll, uh, you won't you will be disappointed at all. And you can see uh, on top uh, where the whistles are, etc., where I've, um, you know, used that oil uh, colored paint along with the pigment where I've blended it out. So, you know, you've got that transition of rust and, you know, grime that's occurred uh, up in that area as well. Okay, now for the next part. Now I'm going to be using here some AK Interactive pigments called Dark Steel. Now you can use uh, any other metallic sort of uh, pigment here, and I'm going to apply it using a cotton tip, as you can see here. So what I've done is I've just dunked it into that metal uh, pigment itself. Now I'm just rubbing the surfaces on where there's going to be a lot of foot traffic uh, from climbing things, just to give that worn appearance. You know, you've got that bit of metal underneath shining. Now I've uh, selected this type of uh, uh, pigment because to me it's going to show show that there's a bit of metal underneath there but you know it's not silver it's not polished it's not sticking out um, so it's more like the dirty version if you want to call it of um, metal and uh, and as you can see I'll just uh, apply it over some railings any places where I think you know someone would be uh, walking regularly or you know uh, where things may be rubbed against and, uh, and I'll apply it to the surfaces just as the handrails, uh, the floors, any steps, all that sort of stuff. Okay, now once that's done, the next thing you need to do is check the running performance of your locomotive. You know, by using an airbrush, you're applying, uh, you know, paint, enamel thinners, you're, you know, you're trying your best to minimize uh, issues with performance, but before you go sealing that in permanently, you need to make sure she works and runs fine. Um, now, I did have to clean some of my wheels and parts as well, um, which is, you know, fine, it does happen, but, um, you know, if you then seal that in, before you test it, those issues that are impeding performance are going to be a lot, lot difficult to take off. So give it a run. Um, and then once uh, that's actually done and I'm happy, I'll then remove my uh, mask that I applied earlier to my windows themselves using some tweezers. And then uh, to seal all the effects in, so the paints, the pigments, everything that I've actually done, uh, I'm just using some standard pigment fixer uh, where I just uh, put it straight into the airbrush and give it a mist uh, over the whole lot. So it ties everything together. It's all sealed in, so now I can handle it without any problems. Okay. 
and there she is so you know the hornby black five now weathered and rusted um you know it looks very worse for wear um you know probably wasn't one that was going to be safe from the scrap heap of course um but yeah so thanks very much uh guys for subscribing um you know hitting 300 subscribers has meant a lot to me and uh, and of course if you're watching this for the first time uh and you you know like what you're seeing you're interested in joining me on my progress and what i do don't forget to uh hit that like and subscribe button uh this content obviously more to watch on my channel if you're interested um so yeah thanks very much guys uh thanks for sticking around thanks for watching and uh i'll get another video up as soon as i can take care now talk soon bye